To follow Wales is the history basically of, of failing in more spectacular circumstances each and every time. The worst moment I think was when he failed to qualify night before, for the 94 World Cup. Vinnie Jones, captain in Wales in uh, Holland when we got trashed. In Serbia when we lost 6-1 and we played abysmal. It's that time in the campaign where invariably after three or four matches we've not qualified, we've got no chance of qualifying and you think why am I doing this? France is going to be invaded by the Welsh. But it wasn't the case back in 58 in, in Sweden. I feel like it went under the radar a little bit. I think that was typified when we sort of got back after the World Cup. When we got to High Street Station, uh, one of the, uh, the ticket collectors said, they said, we've been on holidays. And I said, on holidays, you silly sod, we've been to the World Cup. Got knocked out in the quarterfinals by Brazil. One person that I would point to as being the catalyst for the change around in Fortunes is the person who's no longer with us, which is Gary Speed. You got the feeling that Gary, having been a player not that long ago, knew what it meant to the, be a player, knew what it needed to get the players to tick, and knew how to get it across to the players, how important this was. It was Gary who initiated this, this um, reliance or this greater reliance on things like the science that the players were used to now at their Premier League clubs. He brought in new types of coaches, fitness coaches, conditioning coaches. The players were getting the same when they joined up with Wales that they were getting at their club and that removed a lot of the potential excuses for failure. They weren't fantastic performances but you could see what Gary Speed was trying to do, you could see that after the Toshak era, the players were finally starting to believe in the manager. We were happy to be patient because you could see where he was going. And then, of course, we had the, the terrible tragedy of, of Gary taking his own life. And for a time, you thought that things wouldn't recover. But all credit to Chris Coleman, he, he took a job that I think nobody really wanted to take because nobody wanted to be in Gary Speed's shoes because everybody still wanted Gary Speed to be there. I don't think a national team manager has ever been appointed in those circumstances before where a young, uh, enthusiastic, bright, energetic guy who's in charge of the national team, seemingly leading the national team in absolutely the right direction, suddenly dies in such horrific circumstances. And, I, I, and it left them with a massive problem because they didn't have a lot of time to work with. They hadn't done any preparation. They weren't anticipating this. How could they have anticipated it? So there weren't many candidates and Chris was the standout name, I thought, of, of those that were around. He was on a hiding to nothing because he was taking over from Gary Speed and if he was going to succeed it was always going to be because of Gary and if he didn't succeed it was because he wasn't Gary. But thankfully he did succeed and thankfully he succeeded because he's Chris Coleman. I don't think there was any point in the campaign where I thought this is it, we've done it, until we actually did it because there was always that thought in the back of your mind, oh, this might be the moment where we really mess it up. The point at which I thought it was all going to fall apart was 80-odd minutes on the clock in the very first qualifier in Andorra, with the scoreboard still reading Andorra 1, Wales 1. Through that game, I'd felt almost, well, physically sick, to be honest, because I thought I came into the campaign with optimism, and all of a sudden it was going to unravel after the very first game. So the very fact that they actually managed to get a win out of that, when it was all set up to be the most disastrous result potentially in, in Welsh football history, the fact they got the win out of it was in itself crucial. It was a marker point, and the players will tell you that as well. Well, he's of, he's of huge importance. You've seen that in the friendlies, you know, since qualification when he hasn't played. Wales have lost that edge that they have, that, that, that something from nothing moment. Gareth Bale is one of the very few players in European football who has that capability currently. He's a very humble character, Gareth. I mean, one of the greats um, in Welsh football. Someone who hasn't forgotten his roots. Still likes his Sunday, well, Sunday roast. He, I know he likes that because his mother tells me. You just want to sit and watch him. I just love watching him play football. He's got the whole lot in his locker. Despite being this enormous superstar, Gareth is there and, he, and he, he's a team player. Yeah, they're very similar side to us. Outstanding individuals, but most important of all is the great team spirit. That was one of our strengths and that seems to be now another strength with with the Welsh team today, which, you know, Chris Coleman is 
also responsible for that. They've grown with each other. They get on fantastically well. You wouldn't believe the spirit of camaraderie around the group. It's the, one of the best I've ever experienced. They don't concede goals and they've got guys who can score goals. The two elements are key. It's not just the bail factor. It's the fact that they've also learned how to defend properly. Put those two together and you've got the recipe for success. Stade de France. When France was selected to host the 1998 World Cup, they were met with a real problem. 